Scott, a strong victory, um, a good bounce back from the last home game against Melbourne. What are your initial thoughts after that one? Yeah, I, just, I mean, um, you know, I just got done obviously talking with the group, and and for me, I thought it was our best game, uh, probably all year in my eyes, of just the consistency of playing through four quarters and not having a lot of ebb and flow and up and down, uh, which was um, something that again we've been um, inconsistent quite a bit, and and today was just a very solid effort across the board. Just really proud of the group, and again, guys, just are coming in, and you know, Clint Snell doesn't play, and he gets in there, and, and he's effective in his 14 minutes or so, and just guys are doing the right things, and they're all in about um, this team and this state and and, and and building this thing the right way, and uh, it's nice to get the, across the line. It's a very talented team, and um, you know, they, they cause a lot of problems for you. Jack's obviously had a, been dealing with a toe injury and has come back in a big way today with 28 points. Can you talk about his resiliency? Yeah, I think, you know, we've kind of moved past the toe a little bit in the sense that uh, he's got enough rest in him now and he'll have some more rest, which is uh, helpful for all of us in the next two or three days to regroup before we head up to Launceston. But, um, you know, he's a competitor and, and uh, you know, he loves to play. And uh, the thing with him has been he's had no reps, uh, practice reps, or really a lot of shooting reps in general just because of the travel. And probably these two games probably helped him to just flow into this game and, and got you know uh, his feet underneath him in LOR and, and, and he got off to a good start here. So just really proud of him and his effort. And um, um, yeah, I thought he was dynamite tonight. Really, really strong effort from you in the second half. Um, what did you see about the defense that you could exploit tonight? Uh, thank you. Um, I made a couple of threes, which opened up um, them trying to get out, trap me a little bit. Uh, our bigs just got open and they made the right plays, made some good team effort plays. So made it easy for me to get a little open drives at the end, a little all around game from everybody, made it easy on me. And Mace, did you have fun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mace, what did you think of your dad's performance tonight? The game was great. The game was great. Who's the best player for the Jack Jumpers, Mace? You better say your dad. <laughs> me or somebody else? Mm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> God, every time they seem to sort of make a mini run, you guys have hit huge shots, whether it was Milton Jack yep. or Sean McDonald. How pleasing is that to sort of stop them? Yeah, game? again, you know, they're, they're, they're extremely talented and quite explosive, and you got to, you know, try to somewhat contain them in areas, and you got to be able to respond and, 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 and defend. And, you know, we've been harping on this for quite a while, but, you know, over these next X amount of games that are left, the teams that are, I think, mentally tough defensively to keep the ball in front of them, and you're going to have your best chances of winning um, some of these games coming through here. And, again, they're explosive, and we're, we're thankful and lucky to get a win. And uh, the building was incredible, electric. Uh, the uniforms looked incredible. It's just a great um, – history of Tasmania basketball and display of just everything that was in that building, which a year and a half ago, who would have thunk it? And um, man, it was just impressive to see those jerseys and the fans and just uh, incredible uh, effort um, by all our organization and everyone involved. On the back of that, you must be thrilled to, um, I guess, make Tasmanians so proud on a special night wearing that jersey. And Maybe you'll uh, try and wear those jerseys more often. Yeah, I mean, they look great, and that's obviously not my call. But um, uh, we have some other games coming up with some other jerseys, which I'm sure are going to be just as um, fantastic to be wearing. But again, it's just a, a great history uh, of Tasmania basketball that's being told through our Bloodlines group that we started um, and allowing this to be reflective of what's going on here and, and bring it back to life and, and have these people that have really invested in this state for 10, 15, 20 years that have kind of been laying dormant to really um, – Get their enthusiasm back about basketball, and we're just continue trying to make um, the state proud of, of how we play and, and, and our approach to what we do. I was going to ask about that, Scott. Um, I don't know if you were out in the court when the Bloodborne members came out, not, but the crowd hadn't forgotten who they oh, were. Oh, good. They got really behind them. So how yeah. important is recognizing that? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, obviously one of the things when I got here was the, one of my number one things the first two or three months before I could ever get players or coaches was to try to put that bloodlines group together and, and start to tell the history so that we can connect at some point when our guys start to retire the new with the old and um, and bring these people back to life and, and get them re-enthusiastic about, you know, what we have in front of us and connect the state. And so um, when I see them, you know, I'm hugely thankful of all those people that have um, responded to my knock on the doors, phone calls, and all the things I did to try to organize them to get them together. And it's a beautiful thing when you see it like that. Milton, how fun was it out there tonight? As Scott said, the place was absolutely humming tonight. Um, did you feel it was one of the loudest and the best atmospheres you've had here so far? 
Uh, I think it's like that every game. So um, we got great fans here, and whether we're winning or losing, they're the same way. So I think it makes makes us play even better, especially when things are going well, people hitting big shots, and Jack is getting the crowd involved. Scott, the Jack Jumpers social media shared a, a video of you from back in the day with yeah. the Jazz. I don't know if you got to watch it. What, what sort of memories did that bring back? <laughs> My hair was nice and long, and I had a flowing mullet, and I had some really tight shorts. Um, yeah, you know, you just reflect, and, you know, I was lucky to play in the NBA, really, at that time, and, and, and just play with some great players, and it's a nice reflection of uh, seeing it up there every now and then. It brings back, you know, really good memories. I worked my entire life to, to become an NBA player, which was quite hard to do uh, in my era when there wasn't that many teams available. and. It just wasn't something that a, a white kid from the suburbs of Cleveland, Ohio, would ever have a chance of dreaming of playing in the NBA and people counting you out. And um, that's why I'm so passionate about this state. And my underdog story is still being written in some fashion or form, but it started when everyone said I couldn't do anything in, in basketball. And then it just progressed through there to get to the NBA and, and have my few moments that I had in there. So I'm proud of it. Um, you know, something, a legacy for my family and, and my daughter uh, to see. And it was fantastic. On the back of that, just to follow up, that Scott Roth had probably never heard of Tasmania 30 odd years later. Yeah. You're now yeah. in this situation, um, I guess, yeah, how would you summarize sort of your journey from there to here now? Well, I've said it before, uh, it took me 58 years, a year and a half ago, uh, to find home, and this is home. Um, this state has been off the charts in welcoming me and my family, and um, the passion they've shown me, and the love they've shown me, and um, it's just a wonderful place to be living in, first of all, and then to have a chance to represent the entire state, a foreigner that comes in here and gets this kind of um, love and friendship from everyone that's been a part of this organization is quite unique and quite special to me and my family, and um, I found home. On the back of that, Milton, have you felt that same love and family atmosphere from the Jack Jumpers and obviously having a nice school as well? Yeah, definitely. My family loves it here. Uh, just being out, you get a feel for it just walking around town. Like, I take my kids to the playground or whatever, and the fans come over talk and just say hi, and everybody's very welcome in here. So, uh, Peter your answer go, mate? But have you thought about next year and potentially coming back yet, or the contract in front of you yet, or anything like that? Uh, you got to talk to... <laughs> Scott? Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep all that internal. <laughs> we love Milt Doyle. Scott, sorry on the back of that, I know you don't like to talk about your starting five too much, but obviously you said you put in Jack's toe injury in the past. Is the plan to keep him as that sixth man, or are you looking at...? I think right now um, it's been uh, working, and I think we'll rotate uh, that fifth spot every now and then, depending on some matchups in here. And again, uh, i got to get some more minutes out of Matt Kenyon and get him up up going and I thought Sam was um, quite effective in a short amount of time and again it's, it's just hard to play all these guys um, but we need these bigger bodies against bigger players that we're going against uh, Cleveland tonight you know we'll, we'll have Mitch Creek uh, shortly here and then you got McCall and a bigger guard and and then you're on to you know uh, Sydney with Cook so we need bigger bodies to uh, guard on the perimeter with some of these guys and um, it's important that they get their feet underneath them but listen it's very hard to, you know, take Weeksy, who just got 14 points and played his butt off in LOR, and then not, then sit him, and then put Sam McDaniels in there. But this group doesn't care. They just go and do their jobs, and they take the minutes they get, and they sacrifice for each other, and it's just the next man up. And, um, I mean, it's a dream for me as a coach that I just never, ever have to think twice or worry about these guys pouting or um, being disruptive or anything. It's, it's all about um, the group. You scored 98 points tonight. Do you feel the offense is probably the best position it's been in at the moment? I mean, it's been consistent, and you know we've had moments when we've been a little bit better here and there, and it's always nice when the ball goes in. But again, when the ball moves for us and we keep the ball, um, you know, I like to call have have the ball find life and, and keep it hot and moving, uh, we end up tending to have good things happen to us. But a lot of it is really created with our defense and being able to get stops, clean stops, and get us out on the break and, and get into some kind of flow. Uh, when we're walking people to the line and they're shooting 30 foul shots and all that kind of stuff, it's just killing our momentum, killing some of our defensive, obviously, intent. And uh, I don't know what it was tonight, but um, they shot 11 foul shots, which is you know a fantastic deal for us to be walling up and, and, and not um, biting in or having undisciplined fouls, which we've been uh, a problem for us. When you head to Lonnie, did you go up as a group together and send a high up there, or what's the plan there? 
Uh, we're going to have uh, two days off here, which will be well rested for all these guys to recuperate. It's kind of our last little mini break. And then we'll uh, do some film review on Sunday and, and slowly get back involved and have a really good practice on Monday. And we'll travel up on Tuesday and, and we'll uh, hopefully, um, you know, have a good game up there for the folks up there that have been waiting for us. And um, we're excited to get to Long Sustin. So United beat New Zealand tonight as well. So it's just going to be pretty pulsating into the season, isn't it? Yeah, like I told these guys, you know, it's fun. It's fun. I don't. I don't. I don't even know what place we're in. To be very frank with you, I don't follow the ladder uh, because the game is in front of you, and if you're taking your opportunities, you don't worry about these other teams. It's, it's exciting for the fans and everything, but really, it's right in front of us, and we just have to go game by game. And um, it's a dogfight, and there's just a lot of really good teams that are scrapping and fighting, and and um, I hope focus now is to get some rest and, and focus just on Southeast and. If we can take care of our own business, that's that's really ultimate what we did last year. We we won the games we had to at the end, and, and you are where you are. And if some things happens along the side, you can't hope for other teams to do something for you. And again, for us to be in our second year and a year and a half into the franchise and playing for something uh, like this in a building like this is just a great credit to the organization, Simon Brookhouse, and and, and obviously Larry being in market today to see this building electric um, in our second year. It's just a great credit to the organization. You talked a lot about having your daughter here. What's she? We haven't really asked much about what she's made of it all. And you yeah, know, she's obviously you? very proud of, of me. And um, again, I get quite emotional talking about her, so I don't want to go down that path with her. But uh, you know, she's back home, and she's up in the middle of the night watching these games and texting uh, when these games are over with. And I'm telling her to go to sleep and relax. But she's got her jerseys on, and um, she's all in. And um, you know, what I do, I do for my family and my wife and my daughter and make sure they're taken care of. And uh, she's all about, she loves Tasmania. If she, if she could figure out how to get her dog to Tasmania, she'd be a resident. Rumor has it the dog has a jersey. The dog definitely has a jersey, multiple jerseys probably by now. Um, yeah, we're definitely keeping uh, the stores busy with uh, Tasmanian